Hi, I am Professor N. K. Pandey from uh, Department of Physics, University of Lucknow. And uh, this is again here that we are meeting for a topic in uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, although I have given already a lecture on this, the Broglie waves and have uploaded this one on the YouTube, but uh, a comprehensive view of the the Broglie waves or the matter waves related with or associated with the moving particle needs to be understood. A comprehensive view is need, needed to be understood. And therefore, this uh, is a new lecture I, I am having in which I have started with the Broglie waves and I have gone up to the Schrodinger wave. And in between, I have shown the continuity between the what we call the Newtonian or the classical mechanics and the quantum mechanics. And it will be seen that uh, the progression from the classical mechanics to the quantum mechanics, although it seems to be a quantum jump, but certainly it is not. Rather, it's a continuity of the classical mechanics that is there in the quantum mechanics. So let us start with this lecture. And uh, we will start with the three experiments in uh, the beginning of the for the beginning of the quantum mechanics one is the photoelectric effect the second is the compton effect and the third is the davison and germer experiment now in the photoelectric effect what we do we have electromagnetic wave in the ultraviolet region that is irradiated on a metallic surface the electrons are ejected and these electrons reach this positive cathode and they constitute a current in the external circuit. Now, if we try to explain photoelectric effect on the basis of electromagnetic wave theory, the classical electromagnetic wave theory, then if we irradiate the surface with ultraviolet rays today, then according to electromagnetic wave theory, we should be getting the electrons at least after the elapse of one year. Whereas we know that the ejection of electrons are instantaneous once the ultraviolet rays fall on the metallic surface. More so, other such results of the photoelectric effect are, is also not explained on the basis of electromagnetic theory. And uh, therefore, the quantum theory had to come up and uh, Einstein gave this relation H nu, that is the energy of the incident radiation, H nu naught, that is the work function of the metal, and T maximum is the maximum kinetic energy taken away by the electron. Now here we have to understand that this was explained on the basis. Initially, we can say Max Planck, while studying the radiation from a hot body, had uh, given the view that, uh, the that, the, that the electromagnetic radiation came out of the hot bodies in the form of a small bundles or packets of energy, and he called them quanta. He said that although these radiations were coming in the form of quanta, they propagated like electromagnetic waves continuously. However, later Einstein did accept that electromagnetic waves came out of the surface of the hot bodies in the form of quanta, but he opined that they, pro they propagated as well as quanta and not continuous as electromagnetic waves. So the final view was that the electromagnetic waves that we call these are ejected as photons and they travel also as a small packets or bundles of energy called quanta so this was the result of the photoelectric effect and photoelectric effect could be explained on, um, on the only on the basis of quantum theory now let let us go for the next one that is the compton effect here the electromagnetic radiation in the form of x in the range of x rays are scattered from a quasi-free electron and in the scattered radiation we have the photons which have both the wavelengths the initial wavelength of the photon as well as the larger wavelength of the photon now the presence of original wavelength in the scattered radiation could be explained on the basis of electromagnetic wave theory but certainly the presence of higher wavelength could not be explained on the basis of electromagnetic theory and there the quantum theory had to be brought up and with the help of quantum theory this quantum if compton effect could be explained and we got over there 
the change in wavelength is equal to h by m not c1 minus cos phi here lambda dash is the uh, wavelength of the scattered photon and lambda is the wavelength of the incident photon h by m not c we call the compton uh, wave compton wavelength phi is the angle of a scattering now let us go for the third experiment that is the davison and germer experiment here the accelerated electrons are made to fall on a nickel target and in the nickel target on being hit, when the nickel target was heated then their atomic planes were arranged in regular fashion so when these electrons are made to be incident on the nickel target classically we should be expecting a uniform distribution of electrons in the scattered beam whereas there were maxima and minima present in the scattered beam as detected by the electron detector now this maxima and minima are the properties exhibited only by waves and not by particles so here we had a different story than what we had in the photoelectric effect and the compton effect in the photoelectric effect and compton effect we had waves behaving like particle and here electrons were behaving like waves and in the davison and germer experiment the bragg uh, reflection formula was used to explain the presence of maxima and minima in the scattered electron beam now so we have this con as conclusion out of these experiments photoelectric effect and compton effect they conclude from there we can conclude that waves could be that waves could behave like particles and could make collision with other particles like billiard ball collision now davison and germer experiment it gave moving particles like electrons could behave like waves so we have waves behaving like particles and particles behaving like waves and therefore if we take the energy of a photon that is e is equal to h nu is or e is equal to hc by lambda and the energy is also given by the formula e is equal to square root of m not square c power 4 plus p square c square here m not is the rest mass energy and p is the momentum carried by the particle then since photon does not have any rest mass so m not is equal to 0 and therefore e is equal to pc this implies that hc by lambda in the first line becomes equal to pc this implies lambda is equal to h by p so we can understand over here that the this is the relation that joins the wave and particle properties lambda is the property exhibited by waves and p that is the momentum is the property exhibited by particles so particles are behaving like waves and waves are behaving like particles so we are in the realm of now wave particle duality and we have a conclusion that moving particles can be associated with a wave we call that wave the broglie wave or the matter wave now the question next one arises if there is a wave we call the the broglie wave or we call that the matter wave if there is a wave associated with a moving body then what kind of this wave function psi is of course we will be understanding the properties of psi little bit later but for the beginning this wave function psi associated with a moving particle is a complex function and because it is a complex function it can be written as a plus ib where i stands for imaginary and psi star is equal to a minus ib so mind it the square modulus square of this psi is a real quantity the now this mod psi square we will see later that this is defined as a probability density and is given by the product that is a complex conjugate of psi that is psi star and psi the product of psi star and psi next question that arises that if the if this wave is associated with the moving particle then what is the speed of the broglie wave now our common sense will tell us that since the broglie wave is associated with the moving body this wave should travel at the same speed as that of the body now we may quote the usual formula lambda is equal to h by p that is mv by the previous formula e is equal to h nu that is mc square so nu is equal to mc square by h from the two above formula and therefore the speed of this wave is w is equal to nu lambda m that is finally it comes out to be c square by v 
now the question is the broglie wave here has a speed greater than the speed of light in vacuum or the moving body greater than the speed of light in vacuum now this is unreasonable is it okay now we need to look into a different perspective but, but initially let us understand two things there are two speeds here one is the wave speed or the phase, phase speed and the other is the group speed we call now phase speed or wave speed is given by omega by k and group speed is given by d omega by dk nothing physical moves with phase or group or phase or wave speed and energy or physical quantity will move with group speed for example to understand it in very clear way to make a some good picture about it you can think that you are just thinking that you have reached calcutta in no time you are present over here your mind has gone over there so it is something correlated to your phase speed that your mind is there but physically you will go al along with the speed of your body so this is the difference slightly somewhat between the phase speed or or wave speed and the group speed we will deal it slightly later also now next question is if there is a wave associated with a moving particle then how to represent this wave now does it look like that is look like a sinusoidal wave or a triangular wave or what kind of a wave this we can associate with then now can the following equation of a plane progressive wave represent the broglie wave associated with a moving particle and what is that very simple plane progressive wave why is the displace of displacement of the particle y is equal to a sin omega t minus k k is the amplitude omega is the angular frequency k is the propagation constant can a plane progressive wave whose mathematical expression is written like this represent the broglie wave associated with a moving body and this is this wave now if you see this figure of a sinusoidal wave whose mathematical expression is written above then you can see this wave extends from minus infinity to plus infinity naturally if there is a wave associated with a particle then the stretch of the wave must be finite why because the particle is a localized entity so any wave that we associate with a moving particle must be a finite very close to the particle and not extended to from minus infinity to plus infinity so there is certainly a point that this kind of sinusoidal wave cannot represent the broglie wave associated with a, with a moving particle now how can we represent this kind of a wave then then mathematically we can say that such plane progressive wave like the one we have seen y is equal to a sin omega t minus kx these kinds of infinite series of waves each one differing from each other in omega by d omega in k by dk on superposition of these kinds of infinite series of waves we will be getting a single wave packet and that wave packet represents the wave associated with a moving particle that means mind it here we have this is what i have written over here now let us see if we have one wave psi1 is equal to a cos omega t minus kx and this wave is represented like this we have another wave just like a plane progressive wave psi2 is equal to a cos omega plus d omega t minus k plus d omega dk x and this wave will be represented psi2 by this one only slight difference in frequency etc are there now the superposition of psi1 and psi2 is going to give 2a cos omega t minus kx cos d omega by 2 minus dk by 2 and this will be represented by this figure now mind it you can see from here that this cos omega t minus kx that is written over here this one this is having almost the same as the frequency of this and this or the average of the two and the amplitude of the resultant is twice a cos d omega by 2 minus dk by 2 so this figure the envelope of this particular wave group that has a frequency d omega by 2 and that has the propagation constant dk by 2 now inside this frequency is same as omega so the frequency of this envelope is d omega by 2 and propagation constant dk by 2 now mind it 
So this kind of a wave group, this is the envelope of this one. This envelope will represent a wave associated with the moving particle so that the particle is located somewhere in between from this end to this end. Now, if you see it, then this resembles beats phenomenon in what beats phenomenon in sound waves where you have two, two uh, tuning forks of frequency 250 hertz and 252 hertz let us suppose you vibrate once first one having a frequency 250 hertz it will start with a humming sound similarly if you plug the other one then again you have you have a humming sound almost similar having a slight difference in frequency and the superposition of two is going to give you that this one we are representing here it will give you that is there will be maxima and minima in the sound that you listen and if the frequency difference is two hertz then you will have two maxima and two minima over here so it has a resemblance in sound waves in the beats phenomenon so you can also call these ones the quantum beats so one difference that you can understand and that difference is that if you have only two such waves superimposing then you will get large number of such wave groups and so many wave groups cannot represent a wave associated with a moving particle but if such waves are infinite in series and they superimpose then the resultant will give you one such wave group and this wave group will represent the wave associated with the moving particle so now let us go back to the uh, what we call the wave speed and the group speed now omega is equal to twice pi nu twice pi nu is equal to twice pi mc square by h this m is equal to m naught by under root 1 minus v square by c square this m at the end should be read as m naught similarly k is equal to 2 pi by lambda 2 pi m by v and m is equal to m naught here it is m naught correct h under root 1 minus v square by c square then w is equal to omega by k is equal to c square by mind it w is equal to omega by k is the phase speed that i have explained it can have a speed greater than the speed of light in backbone but if you differentiate the above to d omega dk then you will get u is equal to v that is the speed of the particle and the wave group has the same speed that means the wave group that we have seen just now this one associated with the moving speed will have the same speed as that of the particle and the particle will be somewhere located somewhere from one end to the other now as we have seen because we are associating a wave with a moving particle then naturally particle which is a localized entity we are making the localization of the particle uncertain at least to the extent of the stretch of the wave for example if we have a broad, broad wave packet associated with the moving particle like this then you can see that here it is easier to understand to estimate the wavelength of the wave but the location of the particle becomes uncertain as to where it is located from here to here but if we have a narrow wave packet like this then the finding of the wavelength becomes tough but the lo the location the the determination of the location of the particle becomes easier to establish over here so an uncertainty is uh, introduced i'm not going into the details of the uncertainty principle i have already recorded a, on a, a lecture on uncertainty principle and it is uploaded on the youtube you can visit over there for this now the moving wave packet or the broccoli wave now here you can see an animated picture of the broccoli wave you can see the group is moving as such so this is the moving wave packet or the broccoli wave associated with the moving particle a typical one now this is the link i have given courtesy to them now what are the properties of the wave function we have seen the that it is a complex quantity we have seen that it has the same speed as the speed of the wave we have seen that a wave group represents a wave associated with the moving particle the wave function psi is there psi is a complex function so what are the properties of this wave function psi so 
Number one, psi must be a solution of Schrodinger equation that we will come a little later. It must be a continuous function of x. The slope of the function in x must be continuous that you know, specifically d psi dx must be continuous. And one more, very important point, the solution of the Schrodinger wave equation will give the wave function psi and psi will contain all the information about the particle. All the information about the particle will be inherent in psi. And other one, psi should be normalizable. That is naturally from minus infinity to plus infinity, the particle must be somewhere. And mod psi square is the probability density. So integration over this probability density from minus infinity to plus infinity should result in one. The result will be one. Now this minus infinity and plus infinity is simply a point that we have to understand is the extent of the wave or the wave group associated with the particle. From one end to the other, the particle must be located and integration from one end to the other of the wave group will give you mod psi square dx is equal to one integration. Now, math, let us see mathematical expression of the wave associated with a free one. Now, there are two types of particles. One is a free particle. It has only kinetic energy. Another particle is there which is acted upon by a force. And if it is acted upon by a force, there is an interaction. And if there is interaction, there will be some interaction potential. So a free particle has only kinetic energy and a particle acted upon by a force will have some potential or potential energy. So we are talking about a free particle. Now, this is the expression of a plane progressive wave also, or we can say over here, this is an exponential form that we have written the same sine order cosine function. So psi is equal to a e to the power of minus omega i omega t minus x by v. On slight modification, this will give you psi is equal to a e to the power of minus twice pi i nu t minus x by lambda omega is equal to twice pi nu. Then we have e is equal to h nu and this can be written as twice pi h cross by h cross into nu. H cross is same as h by 2 pi reduced Planck's constant we call h cross. Then lambda is equal to h by p. Again, we can write down for h 2 pi h cross by p. So psi now becomes, we put from the above in the first expression, psi is equal to a exponential minus i by h cross e t minus p x. Now mind it, e is the energy of the free particle and p is the momentum of the free particle. So a wave associated with a moving particle can be represented like psi is equal to a exponential minus i by h cross e t minus p. We will again revisit this. We will revisit this one slightly later. Now let us come to, we will be digressing somewhat from this wave function psi to understand a wave function, wave equation, and then again come back to have a correlation between the two. Now what is a wave equation? We are quite familiar with this one. The wave equation is an important, second order linear partial differential equation of the description of a wave. They, will have, they appear in classical me physics like mechanical waves, like water waves or sound waves or electromagnetic waves, which we'll see one by one. Now wave equation come up in the fields like acoustics, electromagnetism, fluid dynamics, etc., etc. For example, the wave equation for a stretched string is given by del two by del x square is equal to mu by t del two by del t square. It's a familiar equation. Y is the displacement. Mu is the mass per unit length. T is the tensor in the string. So this is the wave equation associated with a string, for example. Now mind it, the solution of this wave equation will be a plane progressive wave. And this solution in terms of Y, we generally find out for a wave in a string or a sound wave or whatever wave. The solution of this wave equation can be of many kinds that reflects the variety of possible ways, wave types. For example, a progressive wave, its solution could be, its solution could be a spherical wave, its solution could be a cylindrical wave. Or now, a train of waves like, for example, I said, the progressive wave could be written y is equal to f t plus minus square root mu upon t x. Now this t upon mu is equal to v. So t plus minus v x, you can say, now minus sign stands for moving in the positive direction, plus sign stands for moving in the negative direction. So the wave equation for a stretch listing becomes del 2y del x square is equal to one by v square del 2y del t square. And its solution is y is equal to a sine omega t minus x by v. Now this is one such wave equation in classical mechanics that we encounter. Here 
y represents the displacement in the string here this is the solution of that wave again we revisit this particular figure and this is one such animated figure i am showing for a plane progressive wave moving in a string and you can see from here now you can spot your eyes at a red point for example you can see that particles are not moving they are doing simple harmonic motion about their mean position in the transverse direction and the wave is moving toward right now this is courtesy isvr university of southampton now this is again a, an acoustic longitudinal wave moving in this particular tube you can see from here that we have compressions and rarefactions and if you again a spot at a red point then you will see that this point is making to and fro shm remain it's about its mean position it is not moving forward all these red particles you can see whereas the wave is moving forward and this is how we represent an acoustic longitudinal mind it the expression mathematical expression for an acoustic longitudinal wave and the expression for a transverse wave will be the same and they will be the solutions of the wave equation we have understood just now and this is in red to show, mark the difference between the compressions and the rarefactions in the longitudinal wave now courtesy university of southampton again now this is the wave this is a string fixed between two ends and this is this has been plucked and we have these are the modes of vibrations in the string that you already know in the first one we will have one loop in the mode two we will have two loop and you know the frequencies are given by n is equal to p upon 2l square root uh, t upon mu t is the tension mu is the mass per unit length and l is the length of this one so these are different modes of vibration of the string that we can see and third c is again uh, isvr university of southampton now let us similar way go to an electromagnetic wave equation now this is same way written as del 2e del x square is equal to 1 by c c square del 2e del t square this is for here we have electromagnetic waves whose wave equation is given by this and in the similar way the solution is a plane wave e is equal to e not sin omega t minus kx that is it is an electromagnetic wave plane progressive, progressive electromagnetic wave or polarized plane polarized also moving in the positive x direction and this is a wave you can see in a typical way e versus v then and here is an electromagnetic wave moving along the y axis and oscillating along x and you know electric and magnetic fields are oscillating in an electromagnetic field electromagnetic uh, wave so you see just like we had the wave equation in the uh, for mechanics for sound waves etc similar way uh, we have the wave equation for electromagnetic waves and similar solutions mathematical exists for them all and then we have the courtesy attribution to these this uh, sites and these uh, persons with a thanks to them now here is the catch that we have to pick up now what is the position of why that is the displacement of the displacement in the case of sound wave or the wave in a string or the elect e electric field or magnetic field in an electromagnetic wave what the, the position of those over there and the psi over here in the wave associated with the moving particle or the broglie wave are similar that means what is the position of y or e over there is similar as the position of psi over here but one distinction is there that psi is complex here y e etc are physically measurable quantities psi is not physically measurable quantity now this wave function psi this represents the probability of locating a particle in a space at point x y z at the instant of time t so mind it this wave function psi is a definitive function it has a definite value at x y z t but psi is a complex function it can be positive or negative and mod psi square at as we had seen earlier mod psi square represents the probability density that is the probability of locating the particle at x y z and, and and t and that is given by mod psi square so psi is complex it can be positive negative but mod psi square will always be positive so psi cannot represent the probability rather mod psi square represents the probability density here it is 
Now, a wave function similar to the wave functions we have seen in the sound wave, that is the uh, in the string or in the electromagnetic wave, a wave function similarly in quantum physics is a mathematical description of the quantum state of an isolated quantum system, much in the same way. According to the superposition principle of quantum mechanics, wave functions can be added together or multiplied by complex numbers to form new wave functions and form a Hilbert and form a Hilbert space. Similar functions can be done with them. A wave function behaves qualitatively like other waves such as water waves or waves of on a string because the Schrodinger. Now, this Schrodinger equation is mathematically a type of wave equation. And this is what we have to understand. Just like we have the wave equations in classical mechanics, in sound wave, in string, in electromagnetic waves, the Schrodinger equation is also mathematically a wave equation. And if, because it is a wave equation, its solutions will be the wave function side, just like the solution of those wave function, wave equations where y, e, or h. Similarly, the solution of Schrodinger equation will be psi over here. Since the wave function is complex, only its relative phase or relative magnitude can be measured. Its value does not in isolation tell anything about the magnitude or direction of measurable observables. One has to apply quantum operators whose eigenvalues correspond to set of possible results of measurements to the wave function psi and calculate the statistical distribution for measurement quantity, measurable quantities. So psi itself is not measurable, but it will give its the probabilistic fun, the probability function mod psi square will give you the measurable quantity. The results will be the measurable the, the measurement of the quantity, physical quantities, but psi itself is not a physical quantity. It's complex wave function. It will not, it is, it will not, it, you cannot relate it to something physical. Now, the mathematical expression of the wave equivalent of a free particle of total energy and momentum, we just, we had seen a couple of slides back, moving along x axis is given by this. Psi is equal to A exponential minus I by H cross ET minus PX. Now, for a particle subjected to some forces, a second order differential equation is proposed and formulated, and then we, that is applied to the spatial cases. Differentiate the free particle expression twice with respect to x and once with respect to t, then you will get this one. Del to psi del x square is equal to minus p square by h square psi. And you have del psi del t is equal to minus i e upon h cross psi. Then, applied to non-relativistic case having the total energy of the particle is written as now, E is equal to P square by twice M plus V. And for non-relativistic case, this, you know, total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now, multiply by psi on both sides of the total energy expression. Then E psi is equal to P square by twice M psi plus V psi. E psi is, now, let us use the energy operator. That is, E is equal to minus H cross by I del del T. Just multiplying by psi, we have this expression and the momentum operator then we have p square psi is equal to minus h cross square del to psi del x square. Now let us put these two in the above expression and you get this. h cross by r del psi del t is equal to h cross square by twice m del to psi del x square minus p psi. Now this is what we call the time dependent Schrodinger equation. The expression that we are seeing over here after this is the time dependent Schrodinger equation. In three dimension, the Schrodinger equation may be written as this one. You can see that what we had as del, del 2 psi del x square in the three dimension, this will become del 2 psi del x square plus del 2 psi del y square plus del 2 psi del z square. Other things will remain the same. Here, particles potential v is some function of x, y, z, and t. Mind it, we have started from a free particle and we have calculated the expression for a particle having a potential energy also. We will just now discuss it. So h cross by i del psi del t is equal to h cross square by twice m and the symbol Laplacian operator del square if we use given by this, then this can be written in my h cross square by twice m del to psi minus v psi. This holds in all coordinate systems, whether it is Cartesian, whether it is spherical polar or it is uh, cylindrical coordinate. Now, just now what I said, there is a problem with this derivation of Schrodinger equation. 
we obtained the equation starting from a special case of a wave function of a freely moving particle and then established a and a general equation having the potential energy also which is a function of xyz and t is it plausible is it okay then we don't we have no way to prove that this method of establishing the equation is wrong or correct we cannot say that what we can say what if we have in our hand is to straight away postulate schrodinger's equation we postulate schrodinger equation solve it for different variants of physical conditions and compare the results of calculations with results of experiment we don't go for whether we can derive this way or derive that way or we cannot do that we postulate schrodinger equation solve it for different conditions match it with the experimental results if they match accept it if they don't match discard it schrodinger now schrodinger equation cannot be derived from the first principle basically why because schrodinger equation is the is the first principle in itself it is in itself a first principle so you cannot derive it from some other first principle the equation in a is a postulate in the same sense as the postulate of a special relativity or laws of thermodynamics they have been established based on varied experiences they are not derivable they are themselves postulates in the much similar similar way as they are the fundamental generalization valid as same as valid as empirical data schrodinger equation can also be postulated and just like that i have said that this their results should be compared with the experimental experimental results if they give the closer results accept them if they don't give don't accept them but fortunately schrodinger equations have given very very accurate results in many many in more, almost all the areas form of schrodinger equation depends on the physical situation the most general form is the time dependent schrodinger equation which gives a description of a system evolving with time and this is time dependent schrodinger equation that I just i have said this is a general one in a nutshell because the quantity in the parenthesis is nothing but the hamiltonian so this time dependent schrodinger equation can be written as i x cross del del t psi h psi hamiltonian psi the general equation is indeed quite general used throughout quantum mechanics for everything from the dirac equation to quantum field theory by plugging in various complicated expressions for the hamiltonian their specific non relativistic version is a simplified approximation approximation to reality which is quite accurate in many situation but very inaccurate in others time independent schrodinger equation that we use for steady state solution of the wave function psi and that is describes the stationary states that is here we have the v is removed from here you can see psi is a function only of x y z and the eigen value equation comes out to be e psi is equal to h psi where again h is the hamiltonian when the hamiltonian operator when the hamiltonian operator h acts on a certain wave function psi the result is proportional to the same wave function psi then psi is a stationary state and the proportionality constant e is the energy of the state mind it generally whenever we solve this expression this equation for any system then we have values of e coming out to be discrete e does not come out to be continuous now this does not mean that there is difficulty in solving this equation or this equation in getting continuous values of e rather the quantization or the discrete value comes as a natural cons consequence in quantum mechanics for example if you solve it for the hydrogen atom e will have discrete values of energy minus 13.6 electron volt minus 3.4 uh, electron volt minus 1.51 electron volt minus 0.85 electron volt etc etc for n is equal to 1 2 3 4 etc in large number of cases the potential energy is v is not a function of time but a position only for such cases any reference to time is excluded so in this one if you club you distinguish between the time function and the uh, xyz function then you can 
remove time dependence and then you will be getting finally as del 2 psi del x squares plus 2 m by h cross square e minus b psi is equal to 0. Here v is a function of x, y, z only, not of time. So this is time independent Schrodinger equation. In quantum mechanics, the analogous of Newton's law is Schrodinger equation. What happens in quantum uh, in uh, Newtonian mechanics? You apply a definite amount of force. You get a definite amount of acceleration, a definite amount of displacement, a definite mass of the particle is there. So everything we talk about in Newtonian mechanics are definite. We apply one Newton force, an acceleration of one meter per square second will be produced in a mass of one kilogram. There will be displacement uh, this much in this much time. So all the things are definitive. But if we solve the Schrodinger equation and get psi, and then we make uh, uh, mod psi square, then you will see that we do not get definitive values in the subatomic world. That is the solution of Schrodinger equation does not predict definitive value. Here we talk in terms of the probabilistic values. For example, if we have to express the first bore radius, how do we say it? We cannot say that the first bore road radius is 0.51 angstrom. No. What we can say that if we make large number of measurements of the first bore radius, large number of measurements, then the most probable value of the radius will be 0.51 angstrom. Everything we measure in quantum mechanics are all probabilistic. The wave function is the most complete description that can be given of a physical system. Solution to Schrodinger equation describe not only molecular, atomic, or subatomic systems, but also macroscopic systems, possibly even the whole universe. Now let us apply Schrodinger equation to solve a problem in per particle in a box. This is the particle in a box. Left hand side, Vx is equal to infinity. We have a tall wall of energy. On the right hand side also vx is equal to zero on the both sides we have the barrier but in between vx is equal to zero so inside we have only the kinetic energy associated with the particle now this this is the mathematically that we can express that vx is equal to zero for x lying between zero and l and is equal to infinity otherwise and if we solve then the second order differential equation schrodinger differential equation these are the wave functions that we get for different n and if we try to plot these wave functions, we are getting this one for n is equal to 1, 2, 3. These are the wave functions. And if we try to plot the energy versus k graph, we are going to get this. And these values that the dots are reflecting, dots are pointing out, these are the discrete energy values that we'll be getting as a solution for the particle in the box. The particle will have only these values of energy which are given by the dots. And here is the expression for E versus K. And here is the expression for E versus N. On solution of the this one, on normalization, we can get this one. So this is the solution of the particle in a box. And if we try to see the wave function associated with the part, with the wave, so wave function associated with the, uh, of the wave rather, for the particle in the box, then we will have this one. You can say, what is A? This is the classical particle in a box. The part it has only kinetic energy. It's a, it is bounce, bouncing back and forth between the two sides. This is a classical picture. And if we go to the quantum mechanics, you can see BCD, etc. And what do we see? That they, if we associate a wave with the particle, then the wave functions associated with this particle are going to be plotted like this. And these wave functions will be behaving like this. You can see from here. And of course, the curtsy. And let us make a comparison to already that we have discussed, that is the modes in a, a stretched a vibration of a stretched string fixed between two ends. You can see this particular one, first one that we can see is same as this one. The second one is same as this one. Third one is same as this one and so on. You can see from these places that we have the same analogy that we had in the classical mechanics and that in the quantum mechanics. So we have a continuity from the classical mechanics to the quantum mechanics, whether it is the wave equation or it is a solution of the wave equation or it is y e resembling psi or the wave function, nature of the wave functions that we have only with the difference that psi is a complex one. 
it cannot be related directly to the physical quantity and here mod psi square gives the measurement of in terms of probabilities whereas in classical physics we have definitive values and curtsy again for this one that i have already given to isvr university of southampton now if we have the two dimensional box these will be the wave function if we solve them for two dimension then this these will be the wave functions associated these are the energy values and this will be the plot of psi x versus x and y and let us see what we have seen by far about wave functions psi number 1 newtonian mechanics versus quantum that i have seen newtonian mechanics is about definitive values quantum mechanics is about probabilistic values that is in the macroscopic world we have definitive values in the somatic atomic world where we apply quantum mechanics we have probabilities we talk in terms of probabilities and similar to what we have the wave equations in newtonian mechanics similar wave equation the is there in terms of the schrodinger wave equation in quantum mechanics solution over there are y e h here the solution is psi those quantities y e and h are real quantities psi is a complex wave function psi cannot be related directly to some physical quantity y e and h are can be related to physical quantities naturally the mod psi square will give you some measurement of probability so we have psi is a complex mod psi square represents represents the probability density just the way we have y and e for displacement of and electromagnetic wave size the wave function of the wave associated with the moving body the speed of the broglie wave is same as the speed of the body we have already seen it size formed by superposition of infinite number of sinusoidal waves differing from each other by delta omega delta k a wave called the matter wave or the broglie wave is associated with the moving particle leading to uncertainty in the position of the particle this the moment we associate a wave with a particle you have an uncertainty inherent in the system that you will find when you try to locate the particle now psi is certainly a solution of the schrodinger equation and schrodinger equation in itself is a postulate like the theory of special relativity or the laws of thermodynamics and here is a very simple joke taken from uh, uh, let us say the internet Hello, is saying. Basically, I came here as an undergraduate to look for girls, as it happens in the youth. Accidentally got hooked to on quantum physics and have been here ever since. Mind it? Quantum mechanics is a very, very interesting field, and if you understand this, only that it is interesting to. Otherwise, certainly it is boring. And while making a transportation or making yourself coming from. classical physics to quantum mechanics it is not just a jerk from classical to quantum rather it is a continuity from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics and that is what i have tried to establish today in my lecture on the broglie waves leading to schrodinger wave equation thank you very much for your kind attention many of my lectures are uploaded on the youtube on selected topics in quantum mechanics you can visit them over there if you you can like them and if you subscribe to them then the notification will automatically come to you when the next lecture is uploaded so do visit youtube link of mine and you will get so many lectures on 